Hey, it's the Chief Bonnie with Board Games, and this is a little bit different today. This is going to be a series that I'll do in different chunks on GMT's game MBT Main Battle Tank. Now, first of all, you'll notice I'm on my Scotch Review set. Shameless plug. If you haven't gone and checked out Scotch Test Dummies on YouTube, go check it out. I've got a co-host, much like I review games, we review scotch with a whole lot of whimsy thrown in. Even if you don't like scotch, hey, go check it out. Pump up our numbers and subscribe. <laughs> Shameless plug. I also wanted to be on a different set for two reasons. One, my wall of games is over there. And I've read a whole lot of stuff about, hey, reviewers, and we're tired of the wall of games, and Tom does that, and some folks, but why not do something different like Rotto or Shut Up and Sit Down? I love my wall of games, so I'm generally going to be still using that as the set. Um, I don't mind sitting over on my scotch side, and I may do that on occasion just to be different. But the main reason is Pandemic Legacy. I've been playing with my son and my wife. It's set up over on the table. I usually film that, and I wasn't going to move it. So I thought, ah, why not shoot over here, and I can plug the scotch test dummies. Some of you have seen this hat. I wear it on the show as well because it's just visual whimsy. What is main battle tank or MBT? Imagine 1987. Um, and it's ground combat. And this gets into a level of detail, all right? A level of detail from GMT Games. I am late to the party on this. This is a review copy, by the way, just to get that out. And they're not paying me, all right? But this game I wanted, but it intimidates me. Even now, a little intimidated. I actually let it sit for a while and, and not sit, but I didn't even ask for a review copy of it. And then I thought, you know what? I really want to do it, even if I'm a little scared. So here's what I like about it. I am a child of the 80s, born in 1970, 80 to 88, my formative child years. I love Red Dawn. I was in the military in 91 through like 94, maybe 90, yeah, 95. And I love Team Yankee the book, <laughs> okay? This is like Team Yankee the book. Basically, Germany, Russia, America, and the battle takes place, imagine, in Germany, East Germany, West Germany, and it's just modern combat chaos. But there's so much detail in here, I'm a little afraid. I found out doing a ham tag that I am a casual light war gamer. I... Didn't know that until I sat down with a ham tag crew. By the way, I'm trying to get more of those done. I'm a light war gamer, but I love this genre, all right? This war that never happened, World War III, and I love ground combat. I was a medic in a light infantry unit. Team Yankee scared me away from tanks and armor, so I just stuck with my own two legs. So. We're gonna go in, I'll shoot a little, uh, a quick unboxing on this, um, and then I'll come back and do a series where I actually cover the rules, and I might even do a playthrough with a buddy of mine, Bubs, who also loves this stuff. But we'll see, that one's still up in the air. All right, come in and we'll take a look. All right, again, my black table, my cool, like, subdued black table's got Pandemic Legacy all over it, so I've got the old tablecloth off. Some of you will recognize. The old tablecloth off i've got it on here so first of all you can see we're still in the shrink here and you can see we've got some abrams tanks and uh, what looks like some clashes with some uh, russian tanks and what definitely appears to be uh german territory so we can see we're set 1987 oh well right there germany and gmt um here is some of the parts that you're going to see that have me both excited and scared. Um, they've got combined arms, which is phenomenal going on here. Uh, detailed weapon and armor modeling systems as presented in its full color data cards and charts. That is both geekily super cool and that's where I get a little bit scared before we unwrap this. They even go into three different models of Abrams. That's the big heavy tank. Sorry, you see right there. It is a tough Bad A tank. The A-10 Warthog is a uh, airplane, a jet, slow flyer, designed to uh, ground support with a big 30 millimeter cannon. They then, of course, have the Apache, the T-82 models, T-72 two models. And then they go into the 64, the BMP, and the Bradleys or troop carriers. I've been in a few. Well, I've never been in a BMP. 
And then you've got the hind helicopter, which is the huge beast that Rambo gets into. Um, and then some of their uh, air support with the uh, frog foot. Now, here's what I like. Basic, advanced, and optional rules. This is what I need. I find out a lot of times I will kind of slowly fold in these optional rules and some of the advanced stuff will scare me away. I'm a light war gamer. But I love this, uh, armor angles and penetration charts. Get a little nervous, but realism's great. Love the anti-tank, because I've fired a couple uh, different uh, anti-tank guns or uh, rockets before, very cool. And then we get into, right here, this is what I'm talking about, handheld, all right, the dragon and whatnot. Reactive armor is sweet, you hit a tank, it has actually stuff that'll explode out and try to bust up those uh, tank rounds that are coming in. So. Um, the other thing is, you can see where our complexity rating is, and uh, by the way, it talks about combined arms. Combined arms are tank, cavalry units, which are like Bradley's, and then guys on foot, and then you got artillery, and you got um, air coming in. So this has the potential to offer everything, but I'm explaining and showing that because it's both the thing that excites me and, okay, all right, terrifies, maybe terrifies. And it was why I did not even want a copy at first. I thought, man, I love it. But is this going to not be something that's playable for me? James M. Day is our designer. All right. It's also done Panzer. So let's just take a look and see what we got here. But again, I will be doing in-depth reviews. So we've got these detailed combat cards. All right. Let's see what we've got here. So here's your... Uh, M1 Abrams, okay, these are thick. These aren't just paper. They're like a hard card stock, interesting. I'm just gonna roll through these real quick. I would be surprised, although I'm not sure. It wouldn't surprise me if we had the, uh, the German tank in here. It's a Leopard, but maybe that is for a modern expansion that could come later. I really don't know. Okay, we got our, our mobile artillery gun. Interesting. Okay. All right, not in there. Fine. And what do we got? What do we got? Wow, this one will come off. I'm ripping. We're ripping. All right. So we got some Russian. Now you can see how detailed this is. It looks beautiful. And I will be doing a gameplay video just to, you know, show really how easy is this to learn. This is such a cool era. The war that didn't happen, thank God, I would have been in it. Um, we're going to come to the maps in a second. They're kind of interesting. I like how there's these little half maps. Let's go through a few more of these, see if I can slide them off. We'll keep it fast. Well, we'll keep it detailed. Someone got on me. I breezed by some stuff and missed some stuff once. So, let me just show it like so. Offensive information, defensive information. I'll we'll have to figure that out. Ooh, looky, looky, looky. I believe that's like the equivalent, the floggers like the F-111 that we had back in the era. There's the frog foot. Look at that beast. Hmm. Cool. All right. Let's see what's in here. Squads and half squads. Now this is where I was. Crew served weapons. It'd be like machine guns and mortars. F-16s, there's our A-10, big old cannon on it. There's our Blackhawk, we should have an Apache, there we go, there's our Apache. I don't know if they'll have the Cobra in here. The Kiowa was used to spot and laser designate. That's huge and they work definitely with the Apache. So, there's the T-80, T-72, very cool. 
So these just from production value, so let's just say GMT, wonderful. I actually figured these would just be like a heavy card stock. These are cardboard um, and uh, they're very stout. All right, we got a bag of dice. All right, each side it looks like 10 sided, sorry. Uh, extra baggies, always good. GMT's phenomenal on that. Let's look at some of these little maps we got here. All right, so these are paper. These are not mounted. So you're going to want a piece of plexiglass. Um, myself included, I got these big sheets of plexiglass. You set these maps up, you put the plexi on them, and everything stays in, in spot. So you can see these aren't photorealistic maps like uh, what you're going to get from uh, Academy Games. Uh, but you can clearly see your terrain detail, your forest, probably light or shrubs, and then your heavy forest. Um, rubble. Um, this does not bother me at all. Although, although I love the beautifulness of, uh, of some of the newer map systems um, for this scale and with these tanks, um, I like the functionality. I'm not saying I don't love a beautiful map. Um, these are easy to read, often numeric, so let me just flip through a few of these. So, it's called geomorphic. What they'll do is they'll tell you, hey, grab, uh, you know, grab map uh, 6 and 5 or whatever. I don't know how they're numbered. Yeah, MBT 5, yeah. So map 6, map 5 would be on the other side. And they'll tell you to hook them together. They all just dovetail in nicely. And by doing these little half maps, you end up with a whole bunch of different combinations that you can do. Cool. I'm just going to keep throwing them over there, like carelessly. <laughs> now, these are heavy paper with like a gloss finish. But if that gives you an idea. Mounted, you wouldn't have been able to get this many of them in there without the box getting huge. Alright, let's see what we got. Looks like player aids. GMT, if you haven't played GMT games, their player aids are phenomenal. Um, but this tells you the amount of detail and charts that you're looking at. So if you are if you don't like charts, these probably aren't the games for you because the complexity level is higher. Sometimes I geek out on my charts. So um, my biggest issue with learning a game like this is how long does it take me to learn the system? And then how many other games are there in the system or how much replayability is there in the system? Uh, if I devote a lot of time, I actually want to end up uh, staying in that system's lane of fire um, and just kind of immerse myself. Looks like um, Beagle Data Card Key. So when you're looking at your... Uh, huh, a little bit different. So when you're looking at uh, your card, it's going to be telling you, reminding you what everything is. Uh, looks like we had some hidden unit track, transport summary, uh, main battle tank uh, turn track, okay, another towed data card key. So again, lots of help here. We're going to have some fixed wing aircraft stuff. And again, the flip side of that, great. And now we get into these counters. These are great. Counters used to be so small, and I will tell you, I'm now 46. My eyes are getting bad. But these look good. I can see them. They're a little bit bigger than normal. I don't know their actual official size. Um, I love when we've got the actual tank on there, especially when they're blinged up a little bit, showing you the camo they would have had on them. And the stylisticness of uh, the way they did the blade there on the Iroquois for the uh, helicopters. You can see if they're four or two. Go into some Russian troops here. Just kind of slowly pan around. There's the BMP. Got some counters with the actual helicopters and the A-10s and the Hinds and the Froggers. You can see how big that Hind is. It's just, just a beast. Now we're even going to get into our ground troops here. There's some crew serve. Oh no, that's anti tank. That's a dragon right there. Very cool. Flip side. And we're getting into some smaller size counters, but we're showing probably stuff that's fired or moved. 
Short halt Overwatch. Getting into some heavy detail there. Whoop, that'll make you a little dizzy. What is this? Command. Okay. So these are command tokens. Upside down. Looks like we got some maybe hasty defense, which is think foxhole or slit trench. Well, not slit trench. Trench. Um, blocks that usually prevent uh, kind of funnel tanks in where you want them to go. Looks like you can bail your uh, your troops out of a uh, burning tank. There's tanks that have been knocked out, burning. Mm. Interesting. I'm sure they have it in here. One of the biggest things the tank will do is to go into go into what they call hold down. That is where they will either sit on a hill or they'll be in a dug-in position. And the only thing visible to the enemy will be their turret. This looks like a turret here that may show how the turret's able to rotate around. And when all you can see is the turret, one, it makes it very hard to spot that tank in the first place. And two, makes it extremely hard to hit, as you would imagine. Abrams have a real low profile as it stands anyway. All right, a playbook. Now, the only reason, I, I didn't even know this was in here. We'll actually come back to this, and I may even take a look at it. But I know what their playbooks are because I've played a lot of different GMT games, so I'll come back to this. So we've got basic game rules. Now, this is your basic game rule. Now, this is what I'm saying. Now, this is cool. I'm cool. But if you've played Ticket to Ride and you got one sheet of rules and you're off and playing, that's not what this is. This is not Memoir 44. It's not Command and Colors. Um, these are your basic rules. Now it's color. They're laid out. I love this system. Kind of the old Avalon Hill system. I don't know what the official name is. 4.432. Allows you to cross-reference, find things from an index extremely simply while you're playing. Because I don't know about you guys, but I'll forget, hey, how does it work with smoke? And then I'll want to go look and pull up the smoke. So... There's some of that. Play tester is very nice. So this is your basic rules, you can see. Then we're going to get into the advanced rules. So you can see we're about double the thickness, maybe triple. All right, let me just show you what these look like. First of all, hello, big. I really get up close. All right, so again, your index. And I would imagine this is where you're getting into armor thicknesses and the glacius of the armor. What's the angle of it? What's the penetration level? How's it different from an armor piercing type this to an HE type that to a different Sabo round here? Da 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 da. I've known a few armor guys. Um, so here is your advanced rules. Now, a playbook will walk you through mock turns. Uh, they'll literally say, okay, put these pieces on the board, and um, you're going to start moving them around. Now, this has a scenario, so let me make sure. So we've got scenario formats being shown, uh, the situation, the setup. And let me just make sure, as we're looking, this may just be the scenarios. Scenario 1 and 2. It looks like these are going to be your... Uh, Troops that you may get for the game. So let me make sure this may not be full playthroughs. This may just be setting up your different scenarios. Yep, looks like it. So, okay. This may just be like the scenario book. GMT's done some things where they'll literally have a, a book that just walks you through first turn, second turn, third turn, fourth turn, showing both sides. And once you do that and follow the book, you've got the game down. That's a real quick way to learn. My apologies if that's not what this is. In a follow-up review, I'll be able to tell you. Boom. There's our contents.